Hi, Adrina. <laughs> Hi. <again>. Hello. <laughs> I am indeed in the car on my way to the airport. So yes, <laughs> we get to take the journey with you to the airport. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome, but nice to see you. And you great to have you as a part of our conversation today. So I guess we could do some brief introductions and then we could get the conversation started. Uh, I'm Shannon Henry. I'm the founder of DG and we are a nonprofit focused on empowering women in Grenada, particularly as it reads relates to sustainable fashion and the creative economy. And so we're super happy to have you, Adrinas, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm Adrinas Creighton. I am the CEO of United House Studios, which is a creative agency. And we have our own in-house model agency, Novel Models, which is where we're going to be talking about this agency today. Um, my background is in art. That's where I started fine arts um, and then eventually ventured into the industry. <laughs> the industry. <laughs> yeah, the industry of modeling. And I've always <laughs> wanted to ask you, so you are a creative yourself, right? And so what yes. industries have you worked in personally as a creative agent? <laughs> <laughs> As a creative agent or just in general as a creative person um i as an artist i'm i'm a fine artist and so i've i've definitely been all focused there for a very long time um and then yeah when i started oh hi hi, hi. 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 <laughs> thank you <laughs> so yeah it, it and then it slowly moves into photography so it went more creative in that direction and then at some point it's a really long story but maybe at some point we'll be able to get into the full story of how novel models came about um it turned into creative agency type of work so awesome. scouting <laughs> working with photographers doing shoots and just and now we're here <laughs> beautiful well, the topic or title of our conversation today is the role of models in the sustainable fashion movement and the world of sustainable fashion. So uh, we're so happy to also have Kendra here, who is an international model, and we would love if you would give a brief introduction as well. Hi. Thank you for having me. So I'm Kendra and I was born in Grenada and raised in Grenada. So I went to school there and I moved to the UK 12 years ago. Um, so when I was 16 and now I do a bit of modeling, um, but also I'm a qualified pharmacist. So I also kind of I juggle two jobs in a way. So modeling as well as working in the pharmaceutical industry. I love that. I think we honestly met just a couple hours ago and Kendra <laughs> told me she was a pharmacist and I thought that it was great to offer that diversity as well. You can be a scientist and a fashion model and an activist for sustainability and sustainable fashion. So it's great to have that diversity and that representation as well. Exactly. You don't have to like be labeled and or fit into a box and one box only. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So I guess we'll start off with you, Adrinas, with the first question that we have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, from your perspective, how can modeling agencies incorporate sustainability into their practices? Because it's not necessarily something that's product based, it's more service based, right? So how can modeling agencies incorporate sustainability and how have you done it? Yeah, that's, that is such a great question. And to be honest, there's so many ways that that can be done. There's like a plethora of ways that this can happen. Um, but just to touch on two, right? Just two things that agencies can do right now that no monetary investment. It is literally just time and energy. The first one. Okay. So one of my favorite phrases is as above, so below. <laughs> so what's going on here, you know, is, is pretty much what is going on out here, what you're seeing. So it may sound trivial and it may sound unrelated, but the first thing that one can do as, um, I don't know, as a, as a business owner, if you're an agency, if as an agent, as a booker, as a manager, CEO, whatever it is, the role that you're playing in the agency, you can check in on yourself. Just check in. How am I doing? 
what am I doing? Why am I here in this agency? What is my purpose for being in this agency? And if those answers have nothing to do with people, then that's where you start first. I honestly believe that will get the pendulum swinging. Like it really will. And the second one is is kind of the same, um, but it's it's more of a reflection. It's you check in on the people that you're working with. Um, these two things sound so um, not business typical type of business things that you would just check in on the well being of your models that you're working with. It is like fundamental. This is like seed level type of adjustments that if they're made it's gonna make make such a difference um right now that's what i'm doing with with my agency being able to check in with the models have one-on-one sessions and just see where they're at periodically uh, what they're working on knowing that they have somebody that they can talk to uh, and go through questions and contracts and all that sort of things those are just two things that any agency any business can do to you know start moving towards more people-centric mindsets awesome so it sounds like you're saying the agency could just be a bit more hum- agencies could be a bit more human and then yeah. that would contribute to sustainability because i know on the top when you yes. say for sustainability there's environmental impact but there's also social impact so the uh, agencies can have a, a better social impact by just being a bit more human and checking in absolutely with Right, because this is there's so many like buzzwords, there's so many um, courses and um, seminars, and there, but you just start here first, you know, and then that's going to really up, up level everything. Awesome, yeah, so I think that's a great tip just starting to be more human, not just in modeling, but in agency and in, in industries in general. If we checked in with ourselves and connected with our values, connected our work yeah. to our values, it would be. Um, impactful. So I think we can uh, move on to Kendra for a question. (laughs) And it's not, it is related because we're talking about being more human and in that direction, tell us a little bit about what it's like to be Grenadian and an international model. What is your story, right? Beside the picture or the face that people see on a magazine, what's your, what's on the inside? What's your story? yeah so to be honest it's funny because my mom showed me my biography i wrote when i was nine on the weekend and it actually said i want to be a model when i grow up which is crazy um because when i moved to the uk i you know the main thing was getting my studies done um you know which i completed successfully and i guess modeling just kind of happened by chance because i guess i was so focused on my studies, um, I didn't really look into it that much, but I was just out one day with friends and I met a girl and she was like, oh, you'd probably be really good for modeling. Um, you should sign up to my agency. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll try it. And I signed up and yeah, I just went from there. It was a small agency, mainly focused on black models and hair. So started off there and made some really good connections in the industry, worked with a lot of UK, so award-winning UK hairstylists, um, some really big hair brands as well. Um, and then I moved over to agency recently and that's been really good. And um, so far I'm really liking it. I think because I've always been like a science girl, it's really nice to be to be able to express myself in a creative way being on set I get to feel so whatever the mood is whatever the brand is trying to capture I get to um, really set the tone and uh, express myself so I think I really like the the mix of both worlds um, being able to have a nine to five within science but also being able to meet so many creatives Um, people who are so skilled in what they do and who just can think outside the box and I love it so yeah that's been my journey Um, and I really like that you spoke of the human side um, Adrina because for me everything matters 
about feeling like I just don't do something just for the money it's all about you know how do I feel like what impact will it have because I feel like we're all here to serve it's not just about me 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 like what can I do while I'm here to make someone's life easier um, in the next few years so um, I love when people reach out to me and just ask questions. I mean, yesterday someone reached out to me to ask about my agency they want to join. And I think it's so, so good to network, to ask the right questions, because you never know what you're getting into. So I really believe in the power of networking and human connection. Um, so yeah, I, yeah I, I, I really like that you talked about, you know, the human side of things first. Yeah, I love that. It sounds like the two themes around the conversation are impact and human or hum humanity, right? So making an impact yes. and being more human, these sound like two pillars of the sustainable fashion model and modeling industry. Yes. Um, let yes. me check what the next... Mm -hmm. uh, so what campaigns have you done in order to make bring visibility to sustainable ethical modeling well there's been a few <laughs> there's been quite a few um i'll i'll go all the way back to our very first like very first campaign ever i don't even know if i knew that that was the word that it was the word campaign that probably wasn't even in my vocabulary when we first started um but the very first collaboration that we did um was raising awareness on human trafficking actually it was a collaboration between demi moore and jack vartanian there he's a jewelry designer from brazil and so we had the pieces um, i was actually living in bulgaria so we she sent the pieces to us in bulgaria and we did a photo shoot um and then we had a whole long um explanation about what we were doing and and so that was for me that was that was it as soon as we did that like the energy the synergy that came from that that was the precedent for every other thing that I was hoping to do or hoping to accomplish as a creative myself. And then, you know, thinking about modeling agency, how that could be incorporated in, into an actual agency. Um, then there was, let me see, there was the, we did an ethical fashion story with Phil and Louis and their German brand. This was when I was living in London. Um, this was also a creative collaboration. And at the the time i think this was in 20 when was this this was 2015 2016 that concept of ethical fashion um or conscious campaigns that wasn't really a thing um like a trend or it wasn't like something in the forefront so it didn't get much attention but i'm so happy that we have it you know as something to look back on and go look this is this is where we always have been this is where we will always be um so that was an interesting way to raise awareness um getting that published it was a really big deal at the time it was like yes this is this is what it is all about so um then there was the grassroots campaign that we did um as soon as novel models incorporated in the us we did a global grassroots i don't know if you can are those synonymous grassroots and global <laughs> um campaign that involved my network and and everybody that I possibly knew and that I was connecting with during the pandemic. And that was just to get everyone to say what they represent. Like, again, bringing it back to the human aspect of things. Like, what do you represent? And then that's what we launched our, our new um, way of, of onboarding models to the agency. That was the question that we now ask as part of our onboarding is, is what do you represent? So that was really eye opening. And I got a lot of feedback from models from creators that they were like, you know what, this was this was really introspective. <laughs> you know, this felt like a therapy session just trying to think about what do I actually represent. And so that was it was eye opening to me as well. When I was getting these answers, it seems like my, I would get goosebumps and I would cry and I just feel like I did not know that about you you know and so that one I think was the most effective personally and that I got an, a lot of feedback on that it was it was really effective um, and then up to recent time we did a, a digital campaign with EBIT 
Um, and the, the founder of that, Simon, Simon Whitehouse, he's been really instrumental in putting our name in places that we need to be seen so that we can, you know, get more conversations going like this. So we, we had a beautiful article published in, um, with EcoAge, and it was about, um, is digital fashion going to be a thing of the future to where, you know, clothing made on demand and it's not wasteful and things like that. So, and then the last one, I know I could just go on and on. I don't want to like dominate the conversation, but the one most recent, which was last year, um, which is the one that is now, this is what our main focus is on this um, SB Creators Initiative. So that one is in support of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, um, raising awareness on some of the most passionate goals that we're about, um, which is like partnerships, working with, in partnerships with, with other companies. Um, uh, what is it? Economic and uh, economic growth with decent work and economic growth. I think that's SDG eight and then SDG three, which is health and well-being. All of these are the reasons why we're bringing together creatives and models to raise awareness on, on the SDGs and to accelerate what's happening, this transformation that's happening in the industry right now. I mean, it is a trend, but it's a good trend. And it's something that you want to, if you want it to be a forever trend, <laughs> this is gonna be a forever trend. This is where we are. <laughs> so those are a couple of them in, in the amount of time that we have. <laughs> awesome, well, sounds like you've had lots of different campaigns all with a, a focus on the SDG sustainability know that you said a, a lot uh, <laughs> as in like great details so I'm wondering from a model's perspective uh, Kendra with all of the sort of nuances that were mentioned and being a part of the industry are these sort of initiatives going to be well received do you think or what's your overall opinion on the topic of sustainability coming in when you're going in for a casting and then the person is talking about uh impact and uh what do you represent right do you is that something that you want to see more of or do you think that it's totally unrelated how do you think the model community will receive it no i don't think it's unrelated i think it's topics that we should be having so even you know lies like these are excellent um and it's really good to know that agencies are asking these questions. For example, when I signed up to my agency, they specifically asked what agency, um, what clients you don't want to work with, what brands you don't want to work with. And it's amazing that you have the opportunity to say that and that they will listen to you and they will respect you. Respect you. I mean, I don't know how many agencies are doing this, but I feel like we as models sh should be able to have a say and um, yeah, we should be able to stay true to ourselves and be involved in these conversations because, you know, we're also, people look up to us. Um, so something as simple as what you're wearing, what you're posting, mm -hmm. if someone wants to be a model, they're going to they're gonna um, want to dress like you. They're going to want to do what you're doing. So other than the clients that you actually work with, you, you have to actually live it out in your day-to-day -day life as well. Um, so I think we need to be asking these questions. We need to be talking about it. Um, and I think awareness is extremely important. The more we talk about it, the more um, people become comfortable in, you know, s expressing their stance. Um, and people, yeah, people will want to join the movement because it's not something that people want to shy away from. It's just a, an everyday conversation. Um, and it comes back again to that human point of view who what do we stand for you know who are we and it's so important to be a true self be authentic and not be afraid honestly you will probably lose some jobs but yeah. I think your legacy matters more than that um you don't want something on your portfolio that you're going to be ashamed of you know you don't want to be the face of a brand that when you look back 10 years you're like oh my gosh <laughs> uh, I don't think I, I want those images out there anymore so it's really important to like be transparent up front um and I'm really happy I have an agency who listens um who will always check in with you and they will ask the questions and I guess even if your your mind changes later on you still you still can say yeah no this this doesn't align with me anymore so yeah I think yeah we need to have those conversations 
yeah, I think that's beautiful. I'm great to hear that, you know, it's already happening, right? Your, your agency is taking steps to check in on you and to make sure that you're working on campaigns that feel aligned with. They aren't just random things or being imposed on you. So no. I think that's a great, um, yeah. yeah, a great shift. Yeah, yeah, they definitely ask you about your goals. And I guess maybe if, for example, we start talking about brands that we do actually want to work with rather than mm -hmm. ones that we don't want to, that's probably something we could work more on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the conversations are being held. And like I said, I feel like even for myself, some brands, I probably think they're ethical, they're sustainable, but when you actually look into it, they're they're not so i think again just having platforms like, like this will help you know the everyday person to think more about it and probably being signposted to the right resources because a lot of brands are not transparent you know things like the supply chain we like the regular person probably doesn't have the time or doesn't know where to look for these things so this is why when i spoke to you earlier i was like this is amazing what you're doing so keep it up um yeah so yeah I, yeah. <laughs> Much. I think that was interesting. and it also leads it to our next question, which is around consumer behavior, right? So I guess it's both of you really what influence can models who are aligned with campaigns, what influence is that have? And so now Adrinus, if you'd like to comment on something Kendra, if you'd like as well. Sorry, what was the last part? You said? Hello. I think this is uh -oh, just... the network. The network yeah. is dropping. Oh. Oh, in what ways? There you are. Okay, there you are. <laughs> in what ways do you envision models influencing consumer behavior that relates to sustainable fashion? Um again there's there's a lot of ways that i can see it but like in okay so from the broad general view of it like how in general in a broad sense how can models do this how can they influence there's the, this anagram that i have <laughs> which is ace like i i i envision it being done ace which is authentically collectively and and effectively so if it's being done authentically if they're influencing if if they're having an influence it would need to be an authentic influence it would have to be done collectively because not one model just on their own or one agency just on their own can do this because they'll just people who don't want to fall in line with this or to up level not fall in line <laughs> it's like up level to this standard they'll just go to a different agency they'll just book another model so it has to be done collectively and you can be collective in your actions and not effective <laughs> so it also has to be done effectively so if you just remember ace how can this be done how can we do this make it ace like make it authentic make make it collective and make it effective so that's like a broad answer <laughs> of how this can be do can, can be done um i think specifically how can models do this it's like what kendra said earlier you know you people look at models and they look at what they wear they look at you know their their instagrams and they got they get influenced and if it's done collectively then this is going to influence the youngest consumers i remember when i was a teenager and i had stacks and stacks of fashion magazines on the covers and I was looking through all the little quizzes and everything like I even tore pages out and put them on my on my wall so that affected me and I'm a consumer at age 12 <laughs> you know you're basically a consumer at, at that age all the way up into you know you you're no longer buying clothing or you're no longer not buying clothing because by not buying buying clothing you're still being influenced so it's not just to influence a consumer to buy something, but it's also to influence a consumer to change their whole outlook on what fashion is, what's cool and what's, what's not. So I feel like if models are able to really embody and understand that this is a lifestyle change, this is not just you know, nine to five, whenever I get booked, I'm gonna be this way. If, if they can actually do this, 
as a as a mindset and have this in there as a mindset then it will trickle eventually and when they start getting booked and billboards and oh that model is you know she's only works with ethical fashion designers and like that is that must be cool you know for the for the ones who aren't really delved into the whole inner workings of what it all means the surface level will change so it's it's like i understand that there's you know sometimes competing interests <laughs> which will prevent this from happening because you really have to have everyone on the same page if you're going to have a truly circular a truly sustainable system so you know if you don't then you got to jump out of it and build your own system in order for it to really work the way it's supposed to so I, that's how i can see it specifically affecting consumer behavior hopefully that's what will happen <laughs> yeah yeah i love that and collective action that we can't achieve these goals without collective action and partnering together with our voices collectively so that's really, really uh, important. Uh, and Kendra, I guess you really spoke on this already, um, the impact of the model or the influencer on consumers, but anything else that you'd like to say on that topic of what purchase an individual person would make um, based on what they see a model doing or wearing? Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with everything um, Adrina said, and I, like I said before, I think we really do have influence. People do look at what you're doing. Um, so even something as simple, like in my household with my sisters, um, I try to encourage them on, you know, purchases, et cetera. And I think you really have to get to the why. Like you just can't tell people, oh, do why? Um, because earlier, everybody is a human. And if you explain, you know, certain brands, um, this is how they treat their workers, this is how they pay their workers. What effect will this have on our planet? Like, I'm from Grenada. I don't want to see Grenada being flooded constantly. Like, we have to touch to the why is it important? And like, if we just keep talking about the why, then it will be easier to do. Um, so yeah, I agree. Um, we need to just continue having the conversations we need to lead by example. And I think it's also, if people are making small changes, really encourage them on, on that, congratulate them on that. And when someone doesn't get it right, and we all don't, I don't either, that's okay. It's all a learning process, it's all a change. Like like you said, Adrena, it's a lifestyle change. It's not just gonna come overnight. So it's, I think every day we're learning. So we should each other, we should just keep encouraging each other um but yeah i think small changes even if we can influence one person my sister <laughs> and then she influences someone else um then that's how it's going to work it's just going to be a chain reaction but everybody has a small part to play but it will like you said it's, it's going to be a collective um effort in the end so yeah I, I agree with everything that you said yeah i love that i think that every person that you can reach each person has their own like network that the message spread out to. So even I think we've had maybe 20 or 30 people join now. And so if someone has heard oh, sustainability in the modeling industry, then it's had it's implanted in there. They've heard about Grenada's vulnerability and now that uh, spread and being talked about. Um, and so collectively there's action uh, being taken for the for the for the better of the fashion industry. Um, so I think that that was all my questions. We did have one model from Adrenus's agency who was going to join us about what it's like to work for an agency like Novel Models, which is a little bit different than a very different than a traditional agency. So if you'd like, I believe you can add her now and she can uh, give us some comments and then we'll have some any questions from the viewers and we'll close. So I think you have to add her from your end, Adrenas. You oh, do I need um, So How do I add? Sorry. <laughs> the little um, icon at the bottom right. I think there's like a video camera and then there's something else. Do you see that? No. No. I see a question mark and a little airplane at the bottom next to the comment. Oh, she's here. She can like send us a wave. She's, and then we should 
be able to add her? Um, oh gosh, the camera, you said press the camera? No, there's like, uh, let's see. She can probably request to join as well, I think. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Um, oh yeah, she can do the request to join. I don't know if she's, if she's signed on now, what time is it? It's 5.30, your time. Okay. I don't know. Oh, I think I told her she was gonna get a link that, yeah. No link. So it's okay. okay. I think this has been a great conversation. I okay. wanna have any closing <laughs> comments from the and thank you so much for joining. And such an important topic um, as we go through with sustainable fashion and as not a movement, but a lifestyle. There are gonna be lots of transformations happening so I think this was an important conversation to have. We mentioned impact, human and industry, uh, and also being a collective. So building networks and working together. So any closing comments from either of you? Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say thank you again um, for having me and really appreciate the work that you're doing and I'm really looking forward to I guess working again together and seeing what else you have in store so yeah well done and thank you thank you so yes. much for thank, you. thank you also Shannon <laughs> this has been the experience that I I would wish on anyone when they're starting and working with a designer or with a new product maker like this, the groundwork that we did before this, how many months, like it's, it's been, this is the work you're doing the work and, and I love it. And I love to even see it and be a part of it. So thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Hope to do something again together soon <laughs> and keep spreading the word about sustainability and fashion and modeling. Yes. Was, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. And in Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>